We've covered many different kinds of animal attack stories on the channel thus far, but this one in particular is definitely a real life horror story. Just imagining the horrific ordeal that these three people had to go through was enough to send shudders down my spine, and is likely to terrify even the most resilient of us. This is the true story behind the 2010 movie, The Reef, and it features one of the most horrifying shark attacks ever recorded. In 1983, 27-year-old Ray Boundy had been living the life he always wanted in the beautiful tropical city of Townsville in northeastern Australia. The father of two was captain of the New Venture, a 45-foot-long prawn trawler boat and was also by all accounts a highly accomplished seaman, despite his age. On Friday, July 22nd, Ray and his crew make some final preparations for a shrimp fishing trip. Later that evening, the crew boards the New Venture and sets off on their journey. On board with Ray is second captain Dennis Murphy, who was a 23-year-old deckhand from Brisbane who, like Ray, had lots of experience at sea despite his young age. The third and final member of the crew was Ray's girlfriend, 21-year-old Linda Horton, whose primary role was to cook for herself and the crew. The crew was headed for a specific region of the water between Townsville and the Great Barrier Reef. The waters in this region were considered great fishing grounds, so the crew had intentions of staying in this area for a few weeks a time in which they typically work odd jobs and relax during the days and then cast their nets in the evening and fish throughout the night. The trio enjoyed each other's company and were undoubtedly lovers of the sea. And so the first two days of the trip consisted of laughter, relaxation, and enjoyment as a new venture headed toward the fishing grounds. It's now the night of July 22nd, and in stark contrast to the first two days of smooth sailing, the new venture is suddenly hit with high winds accompanied with extremely rough seas. The crew assessed the situation and figured that their only option would be to ride out the conditions and hope for the best. As midnight struck, the conditions were not getting any better, and the boat was being hit by massive waves causing internal flooding. As Ray and Lindy are in the wheelhouse doing everything they can to keep the new venture afloat, Dennis meanwhile who was out on the deck suddenly notices a gigantic wave rapidly approaching the boat. With no time to warn the others, Dennis instinctively jumps off the boat as it's simultaneously hit by the colossal wave, which instantly capsizes and flips the new venture. Meanwhile, Ray and Lindy, who are of course blindsided by the wave, are trapped in the wheelhouse. Using a small pocket of air to gather themselves, the two quickly plan an escape route, dive down, and manage to swim out of the surface through the wheelhouse entrance. Spotting Dennis shortly after they surfaced, the three then group together in the water, and the reality of their situation begins to sink in. The trio now find themselves treading open water at night near their capsized boat with no land in sight. As they pull themselves onto the overturned hull of the boat and out of the water, the trio then begin assessing their survival options. A few hours go by and it's now Monday morning. Ray informs Lindy and Dennis that based on the coordinates he'd taken down prior to the boat capsizing, the crew were approximately 95 kilometers from Townsville and 45 kilometers from the closest group of islands. Understanding that swimming such a distance would be nearly impossible given their current situation, the trio realized that their best chance of survival would be to swim to the Great Barrier Reef, which was the only other way they were getting out of the water. It's also worth noting that the crew likely assumed that swimming to the reef rather than staying on the boat's hull would be a safer bet as they likely believed the boat would sink before they could be rescued, or even drift so far off course and out to sea that their chances of survival would be that much slimmer as a result. The trio thereafter collect some items from the shipwreck and assemble a small, makeshift life raft out of them. Using some rope, they tie together a surfboard, a life ring, some styrofoam boxes, and a beer cooler. And finally, the trio enter the coral sea waters and begin paddling towards the reef on their makeshift life raft. With no drinking water or protection from the scorching sun, the trio risk dehydration and nasty sunburn as immediate physical threats. In the back of their minds, however, and with good reason, was the fact that they were swimming in open sea, in waters that were once again considered prime fishing ground, which also meant that encounters with curious sharks were also a very real, and not to mention highly dangerous, possibility. Despite the potential threats they faced, the trio remained optimistic about their chances of survival, and so were making good progress as they paddled towards the reefs. It's now Monday night. The trio is about a quarter way to the reefs at this point, and everything seems to be going smoothly. When all of a sudden, the trio come to an immediate halt when they notice a huge fin break the water's surface not far away from them. 
Being no stranger to ocean wildlife, Ray quickly warns the others that the fin belonged to a shark. As Dennis and Lindy's panic levels rise, Captain Ray then reassures them that shark attacks are rare and that the shark was most likely just curious and that if they did nothing to provoke it, it would most probably leave them alone, which is often the case when it comes to encounters with curious wild sharks. At this point, the trio had been swimming for hours and the rough ocean water had caused their makeshift raft to separate and so each of them were now paddling on their own item. As they paddled for a few meters, Ray suddenly feels the enormous shark pass underneath him. And before he could react, the 15-foot tiger shark quickly turns and bites him on his knee, at which point Ray kicks the shark so quickly that it in fact stopped the shark mid-bite and caused it to swim off. The trio are now frozen in fear, realizing that now that it's tasted blood, this tiger shark was likely coming back for what it thinks is a potential meal. Second to only the mighty great white shark, tiger sharks are known as one of the largest predatory sharks in the world. Reaching lengths of over 16 feet, weighing over 2,000 pounds, these sharks are no doubt a force to be reckoned with. Most sharks have an upper jaw that is built to pierce through the flesh of prey, and a lower jaw designed to grip and hold the kill in place. Unlike most sharks, however, all of the tiger shark's 24 upper and lower teeth are identical in both the upper and lower jaws. This allows the sharks to cut and grip onto prey using both jaws, providing double the cutting and sawing capacity than most sharks are capable of. This in turn results in some of the most gruesome shark bites on record. Ray, Lindy, and Dennis continue to swim towards the reef. Panic begins to set in. Every time they'd hear a splashing sound, they quickly turn their heads thinking it's a shark. And each time this happened, they'd realize more and more just how helpless they'd be if it returned for them. What made matters even more frightening was the fact that it was the dead of night and visibility was scarce, which made spotting the shark by looking beneath them as they would be able to in the daytime nearly impossible. Approximately 10 more minutes go by. A large dorsal fin once again breaks the water for a split second and then quickly disappears. The trio stop in their tracks, frozen in silence, and suddenly, Dennis screams in agony. It's got my leg. The bastard's got my leg. Ray immediately shouts towards Dennis to kick the shark as hard as he could, hoping it would take off as it did in the prior encounter. But to his misfortune, the tiger had launched a predatory attack on Dennis, rather than the exploratory one on Ray. And so Dennis's kicks had little to no effect. At this point, Lindy and Ray helplessly watch in horror as Dennis's body gets pulled under the water. A few moments pass, and Dennis abruptly resurfaces. Lindy and Ray instantly notice the dark water around him quickly begin turning even darker, which indicated of course that he was rapidly losing massive amounts of blood. Ray quickly swims over to Dennis's body in an attempt to rescue him, only to realize that his leg was missing. Ray and Lindy instantly begin to panic even more at this point and begin frantically searching for something to make a tourniquet with. And it was as they were searching for this material that the massive tiger shark reappears. It was at this time that Dennis realizes that he was not going to survive this ordeal, and shouts to Ray and Lindy to gather their stuff, leave him, and bolt. Before the couple could even react, Dennis then pushes them away and begins swimming the opposite direction, drawing the shark away from them. Ray and Lindy reluctantly begin paddling towards the reef again, realizing there's nothing they can do to save their friend. And as they turn around, they see Dennis's body get lifted out of the water by the shark, who then pulls him under for a final time. At this point, Lindy simply couldn't process what she just witnessed, and so begins screaming uncontrollably. Ray grabs a hold of Lindy by the shoulders and shakes her back to her senses, reminding her that they need to stay calm and get to the reef, or Dennis's sacrifice would have been all for nothing. Lindy then takes a few deep breaths and finally calms down as Ray explains to her that they'd be at the reef by morning if they sustained the pace that they were paddling. And so the pair now begins their final paddle towards the reef. Two whole hours go by, and Lindy and Ray seem to be making excellent progress. Everything seemed just fine. It was at this point that a large fin once again breaks the surface of the water, and this time, it begins slowly circling Ray and Lindy. The pair stop and watch helplessly as a shark circles them, holding hands tight and frozen in terror once again, praying that the shark goes away. A few moments go by, when all of a sudden, the shark breaks off from its circle and begins swimming toward Lindy. 
Half of the shark's head then protrudes out of the water near Lindy, as it swiftly bit into her chest and her arms, and began tugging so hard that it pulled her hand out of Ray's grip as he attempted to hold on to his girlfriend. A few moments later and Lindy lets out a tiny squeal, and it was at this point that the shark then begins viciously shaking its head from side to side while latched on to her torso. Lindy goes completely silent. At this point, Ray quickly turns around and starts swimming as fast as he could to Lodestone Reef, which he knew he was very close to. As Tuesday morning arrives, Ray has almost reached the reef. As he got to about a few hundred meters from it, however, to his shock and horror, the shark once again resurfaces behind him. Since Ray could clearly see the reef at this point, this in turn gives him a sudden boost of adrenaline, and he begins swimming as fast as he could towards the reef, despite knowing the tiger shark would be right behind him. And as if it were divine intervention, Ray notices a big wave approaching, and manages to catch this wave, which ultimately gave him the momentum he needed to get to safety and away from the shark. As he barely pulls himself onto the reef, the exhausted and severely traumatized 27-year-old then lets his emotions go, realizing the gravity of his experience. At 10.40 on Tuesday morning, Ray was finally found by an Australian Air Force rescue copter that had been searching for the trio since the storm had picked up on Sunday. Despite captaining a new boat and continuing life as a fisherman, the psychological trauma of those 36 hours is something that Ray doesn't believe he will ever get over.